Hey folks, it is the Nutty Knife Guy. Uh, this is going to be more of a waxing knife philosophic, because I'm the Nutty Knife Guy. It's actually, is there actually such a thing as knife philosophy? Anyway, um, a couple of weeks ago, I reviewed the Cold Steel OSS and gave it a glowing review. And I stand by the review. However, I did not notice some damage that I did while testing it during the review. I only noticed it later on when I was uh, kind of rearranging my collection again. Nutty Knife Guy. I rearrange my knife collection a lot. Uh, and although I straightened it now because I didn't think of doing a video about this before I straightened it, and I, it straightened very easily. It was a very slight thing. But I did bend the tip just a tiny little bit, thrusting it into the war post. So, and I don't think that this is a reflection on the knife itself. The knife is a high quality knife. And uh, I am sure that the Cold Steel Company would say that smashing it, smashing the tip into a wooden, a big piece of wood, would constitute as abuse. I'm going to move you back just a little bit more here. Okay. I move myself back a little bit more. But it got me to thinking about why this bent. Because this is good steel and it's cold steel. Cold steel usually has high quality stuff. And the answer to me is that it was double edged. Double-edged knives have kind of a mystique. They're, you know, like the assassin knife. They're the commando knife. Uh, a lot of states, for some reason, probably ignorance, have outlawed double-edged knives, thinking that be them being double-edged means that they're double deadly. Uh, now, granted, if it's double-edged, it's almost certainly in primarily intended to be a weapon and not a tool. But um, outlawing a double-edged knife as opposed to a single-edged knife because one is more lethal than the other is just stupid. But there's kind of a, a mystique or a legend around double-edged knives. Uh, I think. But the thing of it is, in my experience, being a, being a knife person for a long time now, is that the tips on double-edged knives are inherently weak. Now this is a knife primarily meant for thrusting. Uh, just about, I don't know of a, a double-edged knife that is meant primarily for slashing. Uh, double-edged pierces quite nicely. And of course there is the thing where you can slice in either direction. But they're largely shaped like spear points. So, now this now the OSF being the exception, this is a cliff point double edged. But I've had a lot of the times when uh, the tips on double edged knives kind of failed me. I've got two examples of that here: the OSS which bent, and this uh, MTech, which is granted this is one of the Worst knives in my collection. Knives in my collection. It, uh, it's it's just awful. And not all Antex are like that. I did a video on that, but this one was really bad. And the heat treat on this one is bad. Now I reprofiled this, so it's kind of hard to tell. But this was about oh about an eighth of an inch longer when I got it because it was so dull when I got it that I used the grinder to sharpen it. And when the heat treat on this was so poor that the tip heated up and bent, I mean heated up and melted off on the grinder. So I sharpened it down into something. But there was so little metal at the tip of this knife and there's so little metal at the tip of this knife that they're inherently not as strong as a different uh, type of knife. Now this is a United Cutlery 
What is the model of this thing? I think it's secret agent or special agent here. Use my old man eyes. Look at being what I call me. Yeah. But I think this is a special agent or a secret agent type, which is double-edged. And granted, this is early. You know, this is uh, United Cutlery from a few years ago, and the steel was really bad. Now, this never broke on me. Uh, I did stab myself with it, though, playing around with it. I stabbed myself in the dirt. Uh, but you can just see that where, because you're sharpening on both ends, when you get to the tip, there's just not a lot of meat there. Not a lot of steel. And that's a, a bad news in any occasion, but especially bad news in a knife that you might be defending your life against, especially if you're defending it against a lizard zombie man ninja or a lizard man zombie ninja. Although, I wonder if there are any lizard zombie man ninjas. Hmm. Anyway, uh, if you take something like this, that bent when it hits wood, and you're going in to try to get in between the, the ribs of a lizard man zombie ninja, and you hit bone instead, you'll bend your point. You'll probably bend in this one. I don't think this one would actually bend. You'd bend it, or maybe break it, and you have a much less useful weapon. Right? And the thing of it is, is that if you're buying these online on Amazon or a lot of other online retailers, they will never call a knife a fighting knife. They will never, they'll try never call it the combat knife. There are a few exceptions to this rule. But you'll see this one as an OR, uh, this advertised as an outdoor knife, a hunting knife, a camp knife, a tactical knife, anything but a fighting knife. But chances are if it's double edged, it's a fighting knife. Or a combat knife, but usually a fighting knife. And I'm going to have to do a whole video on the distinction between the two. But the thing that is, uh, I don't, well, and this bothers me for two reasons. First of all, if it fails you in a personal protection situation, uh, you could get hurt or get seriously killed. And also, if you're new to knives, and, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze, because I'm not careful. Oh dear, I touched my face. The COVID police are coming. Uh, if you see it something like this as an outdoor knife, I think they just called this a dagger. I can't remember when I bought it. Uh, when I bought it, it was just kind of an afterthought when I bought it. But I've seen something, things like this counted as camp knives, survival knives, outdoor knives. You even try any kind of light camp, camp going in. Activity or even bushcraft activity with this, it's going to break. The tip will come off even after it's been reprofiled. And so hopefully the heat treated it better down here. Try to fry with it, it's going to come off. Most knife people would do that, would know that. And actually most people, would, and most people in general might know that, but there might be somebody out there that doesn't. So now you're out there, your knife is broken, and you've got an entire, you got you know, an entire weekend, maybe longer, of camping or a hiking trail and your knife is broken. But as it, but the thing of it is, it's not necessarily the knife. The knife could be a very good quality knife. It is the nature of the double edged tip. You shot you're sharpening it all the way down until it's as thin as it can possibly be at the end. Now uh, the exception there the exception to that, it maybe is something like this. Now, I've had this for a while, and I've sharpened it a lot, but this is a Scandi grind. This isn't a hollow grind. And a Scandi grind or a saber grind avoids this a little bit, but you're still getting thinner and thinner. Now, you'll notice as I sharpened this over the years that this used to have a really acute point like this one. But as I sharpened it over the years, it got kind of rounded down, but... Basically, this edge is actually one edge that goes all the way around now. And I kind of sort of did that on purpose because I still get a penetration, but I'm not shaving down the tip 
So it's so, and this is going to break. I'm not to say this won't. It could. But this is also a very short knife. So there's not going to be as much torque on that tip when I start doing the sewing machine on somebody with this or go Norman Bates on somebody or a Lizard Man Zombie Ninja as being somebody. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of a different animal than something longer. But if I pried with this, it could very well come off. It could very well uh, break. Now a lot of people are, knife people are saying, but what about things like the Sykes Fairbank? It's renowned. It's been around for almost 100 years. Uh, and people are, it's still in production and people are still using it. Special operations units are still using it. This is all true. The Sykes Fairbank is an incredible design. It, and it does very well for what it's for. But what that thing, what the Sykes Fairbank is mainly known for, the century over here. Taking me behind, sneaking up behind a hasi, jabbing him in the kidney, and then slitting his throat, or some variation thereof. Uh, and it's very well suited for that. And as a fighting knife, it's decent. But if you look into the history of the Sykes Fairbank, they did have a tendency to break. And the only thing they were good for was killing Nazis and their cohorts. Or and old people like Nazis. Right? Uh, the troops they were issued to, you know, really couldn't use them if they were bit whack and needed to carve a tent stake or just uh, or process whatever food they had, open their sea rations or whatever. They would work, but they tended to break if they were prying something open. Just every day chores that a soldier who is not in actual combat may be deployed to a forward area has to do. And they also tended to break if they hit bone. So Fairbane uh, teamed up with Rex Applegate for the Applegate Fair, uh, the Applegate Fairbane or the, uh, or the, what, the Fairbane Applegate or anything, which was essentially a derivative of the Sykes Fairbane. Sykes Fairbank, but it had a broader tip, I mean a broader blade, and it was a little heavier, uh, but it still had that double-edged tip, but it was broader, and it was a little, it was just a little more robust. Uh, it gave them more slashing ability, and of course it had the, the famous weighted handle, uh, so the user could customize the balance. The point was that that's, the Sykes Fairbank had its drawbacks and had the same drawbacks as any other double-edged knife. And so, to at least to a degree, does the Applegate Fairbank, or Fairburn, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Now, the Applegate Fairbank is still in use as far as I know, um, but uh, not all the special operations units certainly use some sort of double-edged knife. And I think a lot of it, if they're new, they are carrying it. There was an instance, I think, just in Afghanistan where uh, an English soldier uh, killed a Taliban, another one, with an old Sykes Fairbank. But I think it's because of the nostalgia and the mystique around that blade that people want to carry it. And that's great. I mean, it's free to court and all of that. But uh, combat knives like the K bar, for instance, and if you can if you can get one, the Randall Model 14 were more of a utility knife and didn't have that problem with uh, the double edge being weak. And also, there is today the Besh wedge, uh, and I really should have. Uh, put pictures up for this, but I didn't. The best wedge is kind of a, if you have the blade, let's see if I can explain this. Instead of having the blade come to an acute point, it angles off and then actually forms a wedged point at the end because 
the gentleman, I believe he was a, he was a British soldier. He might have been a Royal Marine Commando. Um, I'm not uh, entirely sure about that because he had his double-edged uh, knife snap at the point repeatedly enough where he decided he had to uh, design something uh, himself to solve that problem. So I just wanted to kind of spew my thoughts about double-edged knives and why they may not be the bee's knees like a lot of people they think seem to think they are for a personal protection knife. A lot of boot knives are double-edged, for instance. And it, like I said, there's a lot of legislation out there that just, you know, uh, uh, anything double-edged is automatically illegal. And they're not, they're not more lethal than any other kind of knife. And those laws are just born out of ignorance and this emotional response because, ooh, that looks nasty. It's double-edged. And another thing is with this business, as I said earlier, because they don't want to associate their, their, themselves with weapons on places like Amazon. Uh, they, they won't call it what it is, and people get out there and try to use double-edged knives for survival or bushcraft or something like that, and they wind up with a broken knife. And if you're a seri on a serious backpacking trip or a serious camping trip and you can't you know, get in your car and go down to the local Walmart and get yourself a knife that works, it's not necessarily life-threatening, but it can, it can sure be inconvenient. So uh, there's that. And also, for people who uh, want a knife for personal protection and think that a double-edged knife is the best, is, is good for that, it can be. And I'm not saying that double-edged knives aren't effective. I'm not saying that you shouldn't carry a double-edged knife. I'm not saying that double-edged is bad. It's like anything else, you have to understand its limitations. Right? Now, if you are well-trained, right, and you can know for a fact that when you do that thrust, it's going to get between a rib of a lizard man zombie ninja, then you have no problems with a double-edged knife. But for most people that aren't going to train, that aren't going to be that accurate. If you hit bone and your point goes snap, um, first of all, what you thought might be a disabling thrust to your opponent uh, might not be. And now he's going to be really annoyed. That could cost you your life and limb. And for another, again, if uh, you're, uh, so, uh, and, and with the whole thing of it mis being, uh, being mislabeled to the point where somebody misuses it, it's a real problem. Now, having said that, a lot of people over the years have been killed with double-edged weapons. But I think for the average person, you just have to use them with their limitations in mind. Don't try to get through the ribs. Right? If you're going to, if you're facing a lizard man zombie ninja, go for the abdominal area where there's no bones to hit. And of course, the neck. But for the average person, taking the chance of getting through the ribs, probably not going to happen. It might, but it might not. And then you get a crap experience. If it doesn't, and your weapon fails you catastrophically, big trouble. Uh, so this is a really short one. It just it just occurred to me when I was when I found that little problem with the OSS uh, because I, that really surprised me when I finally noticed it uh, because it's cold steel and they usually do their AUS eight steel very well and I think this is too. I don't think this was a failure of the knife materials. I think it was an inherent failure in the design of double edged blades. So, um, and the, like, there's compensations for that, uh, as I said, instead of writing to a point, just maybe if you have the ability, just grind the uh, edge so the edge just wraps completely around. 
that makes it a little, a little bit stronger. It still doesn't completely solve the problem. And I'm not ragging on double-edged knives. I'm certainly not ragging on the, uh, the sykes Fairbane or the applegate Fairbane. But I do think that, uh, unless you're using a best wedge, that no matter what the knife is made out of, it's going to the point is going not going to be as strong as it could be if it wasn't double edged, simply because you are thinning that all the way down to its thinnest point at that at the tip. And if you hit something hard instead of something squishy, bad things can happen to the knife. All I'm saying. And that really is uh, all I have to offer this week it's just some thoughts uh if you know i am i'd love to see what you guys think in the comments just uh be respectful if i'm wrong about something take me to school do it respectfully don't be a dick and we're good and with that i bid you to draw your knives only in just perfect sheathe them only with honor and to remember that without knives, life would be dull and pointless. Please like, uh, like, share, and subscribe if you are so inclined. I really appreciate that. I got a couple of new subscribers this week. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I bid you goodbye.